Hi, this is Charles Fox, and you're listening to TV Confidential. Ed Robertson, along with her guest Eileen Graff, the actress known around the world as Marsha Owens on Mr. Belvedere. Eileen's vocal workshop, Making the Song Your Own, offers students an opportunity to sing every week in a stress-free environment while also learning important techniques that they can apply whether they want to sing professionally or just for the fun of it. To learn more about Making the Song Your Own, go to Eileen Graff. Com. Before we went to break, Eileen gave us an example of how she devotes part of each semester on making the song your own by teaching her students how the right arrangement of a song is important to finding the musical expression of that song so that you can make that song your own as we pick up the conversation. And arranging is so, so important. And Ben and I have been married for 41 years, Mm -hmm. and we have been musical partners all that time. And sometimes he'll come to me with a, you know, he'll just play a figure on the piano, and he says, I love this figure. And I go, I do too. Let's find a song that will work with that figure. You know, we'll go backwards. But finding the musical expression of a song, not just the lyrical expression, but the musical expression, is really important. Because as you become more experienced and move on in your singing career, you don't want to do things exactly the way everybody else does. You want it to be unique, and one of the fun things about song interpretation is finding a unique way to do things, and it's something that Ben and I strongly, strongly believe in, and our show that we do, our cabaret shows that we do, uh, every song, you may know the song, but you've never heard it the way my husband comes up with to do it. It's really fun. It's very stimulating. It keeps your imagination going, keeps your mind busy, and and really feeds your musical soul, I think. To learn more about making the song your own, if you're interested in possibly uh, signing up for the spring semester of classes, which will start probably sometime in early 2020, go to EileenGraff.com or the Making the Song Your Own page on Facebook. We're talking about interpretation. I saw a friend of mine perform the other night in Altadena, and he did... I'm trying to explain it because, again, I'm musically illiterate. It was an acoustic arrangement of Take Me Out to the Ball Game uh, that had kind of a folk vibe and sort of an R&B vibe. It was... uh, Fun. It it was. Fun. Exactly. Yeah. And, again, that's going back to, you know, some of the choices... uh, You show your students how to find in in making a song your own. It just... You could take any song and make it right. an original. Yes. For example, in my show, uh, I mean, one, one of the songs we have is the Beatles song, I Want to Hold Your Hand. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a very up, poppy, fun kind of little little tune. We slow it down and make it a very, um, it's kind of a ballad, and I usually do it walking through the, I either do it walking through the audience or I, or I sing it right to somebody. And it becomes a whole other song Mm -hmm. (laughs) that way. (laughs) It's very different. It's very fun. And the people just love it because they like creativity. And as musicians and performers, we like to be creative. And your friend's rendition of Take Me Out to the Ball Game, I mean, what a great idea. It's just a wonderful idea. And it brings a whole other feeling. I bet you get a whole other sense of what it's like to be at the ballpark and what it's like to was in the nice warm air and to smell the peanuts and and to watch these magnificent athletes on the field. You get a whole other feeling about what that's like with this other rendition of the song, and I think that's great. Now, uh, speaking of the ballpark and, and the feel of the stadium, for those who may not know, Eileen has performed the national anthem at Dodger Stadium and, and other venues. Uh, she's performed it for the Clippers. She's performed it for the Angels. Now, let me ask you this. I have been told that singing the Star Spangled Banner is one of the hardest things to do live. How do you, Eileen, how do you make the Star Spangled Banner your own? You know, the first time I did the Star Spangled Banner was for the Angels. Mm-hmm. And I was instructed by the person who was in charge of the, the anthem singer. She was uh, a great woman named Corky. And she said to me, and this was my first anthem, she said, Mr. Autry. That being Gene Autry, who was the owner of the Angels. 
at that time. Like a very straightforward anthem. So just sing it as it's written. Mm-hmm. I mean, she she was a doll. She was wonderful. And I said, you got it, Turkey. And when I sing the anthem, I keep thinking of Mr. Autry, Mr. Gene Autry, and the respect that he felt the anthem deserved. And I always sing it. I, You know, we, we have a high note at the end, mm-hmm. you know, just for interest and because it's fun to do. But otherwise, we do it in tempo. I do it respectfully, and nobody at, the, nobody at the ballpark is interested in the singer. They just want the game to start. Yeah. It's not about you unless you're Whitney Houston, who did the most magnificent anthem I've ever, ever heard. That arrangement of uh, the national anthem was groundbreaking and phenomenal. But for the rest of us, I think, do it and let them start playing. <laughs> Speaking from when I sit in the seat and hear it live, there's a part of me, yeah, get it over with. But a good rendition, even if you're remembering what uh, Gene Autry said and don't make it about you, it can get the crowd going and get them ready for the Dodgers to take the field or the Angels to take the field. And so, I mean, I guess those are little ways you can make a song like that your own while also being right. true to the song. Right. And I think it's doing it with respect and enthusiasm and excitement at being there and that we're all here together and we're singing about our country and we are we're sharing this uniquely american experience of being together at the ballpark and if you do a good job i mean it's a hard song to sing it's Mm -hmm. rangy and it's hard to remember the words and you get nervous and there's sound lag and you know there's a whole bunch of elements that go into doing it i'll tell you the first time i walked out onto that field at angel stadium i almost fell down it's so big yeah so big you don't you know when you watch on tv you don't it's so different and it's so different from watching a game from the stands Mm -hmm. when you're standing on that field and you see how big it really is it's like oh my god what have i gotten myself into (laughs) so it, it, it is hard but as a professional so what it's hard so what that's job is to do the job absolutely and and to do it well and to sing in tune and to sing with with a smile and to understand the the words. I agree. It can really set everything off right. What I don't think most people want to hear is a very self indulgent anthem. They just they wanna hear a nice clean version and they wanna like you said, they want the anthem to help set the stage for the day. Now I was thinking about this before I called you, Eileen. We mentioned at the top of our program you began your career as the understudy in Promises, Promises. And to me, being the understudy is, I mean, yes, every job is hard in the sense in that you got to do the work and you got to be ready. But it's like, to me, being the understudy, if I may, it's like being one of the pitchers in the bullpen at Dodger Stadium. Is that, uh, (laughs) you know... Right, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, I mean, you don't know whether you're going to perform that night, but you got to be ready. You do. Yeah. When was the first time you actually performed as Fran? It was a matinee day. I think it was a Wednesday matinee. It was either a Wednesday or Saturday. Now I don't remember. But I I went to work. I got a tuna fish sandwich. I was going to have my sandwich before the matinee, and I, I go into the theater, and the stage manager says, you're on today. I went, are you kidding me? I was just, I was just going to have a tuna. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you are on. So I called my mother, and uh, my parents lived in Queens, New York, which is not that far from Manhattan, uh, where we did the show. And uh, I went upstairs to, the, to, her, to her dressing room, to uh, Jill O'Hara's dressing room, and I got ready, and I, 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 to this day, I can hardly believe it. I had virtually no time. I didn't know until I got to the theater that I was going to be on. I was very, very young. I was like 21 years old, and that's when you, it's, it's kind of good to be young and ignorant. Mm-hmm. You know, you just, sort of, you just sort of do things. Now, I look back and I go, oh, my God, what you did. <laughs> show all the time and hearing the show all the time 
and very well rehearsed. So I was ready. I was ready to go on. We're talking to Eileen Graff, the actress known around the world as Marsha Owens on Mr. Belvedere. Eileen's vocal workshop, Making the Song Your Own, offers students an opportunity to sing every week in a stress-free environment while also learning important techniques that they can apply whether they want to sing professionally or just for the fun of it. To learn more about Making the Song Your Own, go to Eileen Graff. Dot com. Before we totally leave the subject of baseball, at least as a metaphor, I was also thinking about this, you know, because most people listening tonight know you as Marsha Owens and, and Mr. Belvedere. And I was thinking about this because I, I hadn't re- realized that Christopher Hewitt had a long career on stage in the UK as well as here. So both you and he had stage experience, which I'm sure you bonded over, and even Bob Euchre. What he does on a day-in, day-out calling baseball games, that's another kind of live performance because, you know, you're not just calling the balls and strikes. You have to make the game interesting. And so for the listeners who are watching, who are listening to it on the radio, and that, that takes a lot of skill. So it's like all three of you had experience in live performance. Right. Uh, Bob was is a remarkable uh, radio guy. Mm-hmm. Absolutely remarkable. He... He, first of all, he's really, really funny. Mm-hmm. Um, he can take any situation and make it funny and make it fun. And we used to go and sit up in the broadcast booth when the Brewers, he works for the Milwaukee Brewers, mm-hmm. um, when they would play the Angels and also when they played the Dodgers when they moved over to the National League. And we would be watching the game and there would be nothing happening. It would be one of those games that just like nothing was happening, no scoring, no hits, no nothing. And he had to, as you said, make that come alive for all of the Midwest um, listeners who listened to him religiously. And we would just look at each other saying, he is brilliant. He's making this sound like something's going on when nothing is going on. I don't know how he did it. But his improvisational skills are, well, honed for, you know, he's been doing it for 50 years. Yeah. So he really, really knows what he's doing. And his energy and the ability to just pull stuff out of his brain was, uh, it's just awesome, awesome. Yeah, it's another sort of theater of the mind, improvisation of the mind, and that you never know what you're going to say <laughs> every night. Right, you never know what they're going to say until it comes out of your mouth. Exactly. Sometimes sometimes it's great, and sometimes you just want to go home and say, I'm never going to open my mouth. <laughs> I'm going to get a job at Walmart and forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> One more thing, and this kind of relates to improvisation. I had forgotten that you were in the famous episode of Laverne and Shirley in which Lenny and Squiggy went on the dating game. Yes, yes. Oh, my gosh, that was... Some of the most fun I've ever had in television. Um, Penny Marshall directed that episode. Mm -hmm. It was the one of the very first things she ever directed, and the feeling on the set was so great. She was a wonderful, wonderful director. She would pull me aside and say, "If you count to two before you say the next line, you're going to get a big laugh." (laughs) And I would always do. I would do whatever she told me to do. Everything she said worked like a charm. And, gosh, it was so much fun. We had a ball. Yeah, I come from the San Francisco Bay Area. So, you know, my immediate interest is the fact that you got to work with Jim Lang. Oh, what a sweetie. He was. He had so much fun being on the show playing himself. Mm-hmm. I, I can't even imagine what it's like playing yourself, you know. <laughs> but he got in the spirit of it. He got right into the comedy and was a great team player and was really a, just an absolute pleasure to work with. I liked him very, very much. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you, Eileen Graff. The fall semester of Making the Song Your Own is sold out, but you are taking applications for the spring semester, which, if all goes well, will be sometime in the spring of 2020. What else do you have on the horizon that you're at liberty to tell our listeners about? Well, I guess I guess I'll make my first announcement right here with you, Ed. Um, in December, December twenty first, at uh, Feinstein's at Vitello's, which is a wonderful cabaret uh, night spot we have here in Los Angeles, I'm going to be bringing back by popular demand my holiday show, the Eileen Graff Holiday Show, 
on December 21st at the Tellos. We did it a couple of years ago, and it was it was so much fun. It's all holiday music and funny stuff and, and thoughtful stuff and special guests. Um, my brother, Todd Graff, who is a Tony nominee for his role in Baby on Broadway, and he's written and directed a bunch of movies, and he's going to be one of my special guests, and we've got a lot of other fun things in the works. So um, I hope everybody, if you're in town over the Christmas holiday, December 21st, you'll come to Feinstein's at the Tello and share some holiday spirit with us. That sounds like a great way to spend the holidays. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? We'll I may, be there, it, and uh, it'll be great to see you. I just may do that. I, I, I haven't been to Vitello's in many, many years, but it's a wonderful venue. It is. And Michael Feinstein just took it over. He's now um, a partner in the room, and, you know, he is just the master of the of the American Songbook, and he's it's wonderful to have his support in the room and he's bringing some great talent into the room, and uh, we're thrilled. Those of us who are in that cabaret community are so excited to have Michael be a part of, uh, of the Tellos, and it's Einstein's at the Tellos in Studio City. Eileen, thank you so much. Well, thank you. It was a real pleasure, Ed. Take good care. To learn more about making the song your own, go to Eileen Graff. Ed Robertson, along with her friend Donna Allen Figueroa, who I understand has a new book out. Yes, it's entitled Fall Again Beginnings. It's the first part of a four-part contemporary romantic series uh, set against the background of working actors. Something that you know a a thing or two about. Well, you write what you know, and I have been working in the business for several years. It is not necessarily autobiographical, but it's based on... Sure, many of the experiences that the actors in my book have. Many have happened to me. Many have happened to friends of mine. It's not, if you're looking for Valley of the Dolls, it's not. It's grounded in reality. It is grounded in reality, and it's the first in a series. Yes, Called the Fall Again series. Fall Again, which is available as a paperback as well as an ebook and in Kindle at FallAgainSeries.com. Become an advertiser or underwriter of TV Confidential and let our brand help promote your brand. To find out more, go to TelevisionConfidential.com/advertise. Hi, my name is Lily. My mom and dad used to fight about money all the time. Then one day, I heard them talking about this guy. Some uncle I never knew called Uncle Sam. Well, they say this Uncle Sam guy wanted them to pay him like a gazillion dollars. And they didn't have a gazillion dollars. So they called this company they heard on the radio called The Tax Doctor. And The Tax Doctor worked with Uncle Sam's people. I think they're called the IRS. And they're able to work it out so my mom and dad didn't have to pay Uncle Sam very much money at all. So now mom and dad are happy. And I'm happy too. Thanks, Tax Doctor. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, call now and pay less. 800-649-0142 800-649-0142 That's 800-649-0142 Hi, this is Titus Welliver. You're listening to TV Confidential. Are payday loans ruining your life? Do you want control over your money again? If you have two or more payday loan cash advances, listen closely. You may be eligible for a program payday loan companies don't want you to know about. A program that may help get aggressive and unfair payday loan companies out of your bank account and get you back on track to financial freedom. Payday loan companies may trap you into paying outrageously high interest rates. And they take way too much of your hard-earned money every week. We understand their tactics and know how to keep them off your back. We'll fight hard to help you regain control of your money. If you have two or more payday loan cash advances, call right now for a free consultation. 800-488-5880. 800-488-5880. 800-488-5880. That's 800-488-5880. 